Hello YouTube, thought I'd do a quick video here. As the title says, I'm having some sound problems with my TYT 9000D. This would also apply to the Redivis RT 9000D because they're the same radio. Now, what I mean by sound problem, when I listen to it, like my Morse code coming over the radio, it doesn't sound clean and crisp. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. I probably should have done a sound sample before I did this video, but I didn't think of that until now. So, and this radio is already apart, but it just doesn't sound very good. Now, it could be the internal speaker could be bad in here, but I found a bad capacitor. And I didn't even need any special test equipment. And I'm going to show you how to visually look for a bad electrolytic capacitor. What will happen is the top of the capacitor will bulge out. And I'll show you that in a minute here, a little bit later in the video. But, um, and I'm not going to show you how to take this radio apart. There's probably a, a, a thousand YouTube videos on how to do that. But... You're going to need a, 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 a Torque T6 and a Torque T8 and a Phillips screwdriver. Now, the cover is T8. Once you take the cover off, if you have anything like, like in this radio, I have a DB9 uh, kit in it. So I have to unplug that. Then over here in the corner, you're going to unplug your internal speaker. You're going to unplug that. Then you're going to have to, on the PL259 connector where the antenna screws in, the center conductor goes to the circuit board. So it's easy just to unsolder it from the PL259 connector. You got to unsolder that. Then you got to remove a lot of screws. And the screws are going to be in components. That This transistor had a screw in it. This heat sink had a screw in it. There's going to be screws on the circuit board. There's going to be, this is a grounding strap that had screws in it. I had to remove all that. There was a little piece of metal here that had screws on it. I had to remove, there's a screw down here, screw here. So you gotta remove all that. But you gotta disconnect the ribbon cable that the front panel's hooked to. And how you do that is you take a small screwdriver and you lift up each corner on this brown, in my radio, it's kind of like a brownish. Yeah, it's kind of a brown, dark brown. You lift up each corner on the connector and then you can slide this ribbon cable out. Make sure you lift up and dis and slide this up before you try pulling that cable off. Once you get that out, now you got all your screws out. Now we can take this front panel off. There were screws holding this on. That's the T6 by the way. Now we can slide this out. And to do that, you got to lift the front of this up and slide it out like this. Okay? Now, like I said, I could have a bad speaker. Here's my internal speaker. I haven't tested that yet, so that could also be bad. But I want to mention something, too, that you should be aware of. When you do this, um, you should really get some heat sink compound. And what I mean by that is you can, you can go on eBay, type in heat sink compound. It can be the white. It can be gray. Um, but what it is, it's special compound. As you can see here, let me, you can see this transistor's got it on. You can see there were some on that part. And then when I take this off, there's heat sink compound on this output transistor. This is what does your transmitting power right here. You should put more of that on there. And then there were some right here when you put this back together. You should recompound it with heat sink compound, okay? So make sure you grab a tube of that. It's cheap. Go on eBay. Type in heat sink compound. It can be white. It can be gray color. You know, the, the gray is supposedly better, but whichever one you want to get. But you got to put it back on here because once I disturbed that, I kind of rubbed it off a little bit. But you want to put it on here and on here, okay? But now we got the, this out of this. Now we can take this off to the side. Now... Like I said, I have an audio problem. My sound doesn't sound right. So I quickly do a visual inspection of any circuit board. Doesn't matter if it's a TV, doesn't matter if it's a computer, doesn't matter what it is. Do a visual inspection. And right away, 
I found a bad capacitor without even using any test equipment. This one right here is bulged on top. And I will show you that in a minute. Now, how do I know this capacitor is my speaker capacitor? Well, you can look, and, and the good news is there's a schematic available. I'll post a link to the in the description below to that um, schematic. But the schematic available is for the ham version. That's okay because we just wanted the sound circuit is going to be the same whether it's a ham version or whether it's a GMRS version. So I don't care. I, you know, it should be the same. But another way to test it is this is the speaker jack that I, our speaker that I unplugged, that's the internal speaker. If I take my meter and continuity and then on this capacitor, find the leads and put my meter in continuity, basically what continuity means if you don't know electronics, is there a connection? So if I put my meter into continuity or connection mode, and I find that capacitor and I touch one lead, it's the meter will beep if there's connection if you have a continuity buzzer on your meter. It will beep. So if I put on continuity and I touch this lead to the pin of that connector, and if I get continuity, that tells me that capacitor is part of the audio circuit. Okay? So that's one way of doing that. Now, capacitors... They come in all different sizes. Electrolytics um, are going to be marked. There's going to be a minus on the, see this, how it says minus? So when you put the capacitor and you unsolder this, you got to make sure you make a note. Take a black marker and put a dot on the circuit board so that if, you know, you get distracted, you know where the minus side of that capacitor goes into. If you put it in backwards, it, the capacitor could get damaged. Um, if you put it in backwards. Also, electrolytic capacitors are going to have markings on them. This one right here is a 330 microfarad UF at 35 volt. These are also high temperature capacitors. How do I know that? Because they will be marked on the side. They will say 105 uh, Celsius. And this is actually, these capacitors are actually low um ESR ones too. So if I went to eBay and I typed in 105 low ESR 330 UF 35 volt capacitors, I should find something that um, I can replace this with. Now, some of these capacitors are not high temperature because they don't say that and usually the high temperature capacitors are a little different in color. But these right here capacitors are just normal electrolytics they can come in all sizes but they still got a minus si side on them that you got to be careful of hopefully you can see that so just be mindful when you go to so unsolder that which side's minus you don't put the capacitor in the wrong way so now so that's one way of testing with with a meter well we can go to this like i said the schematics available for this so let's go to the schematic and see what we got here's the schematic of the sound now, I want to make note that this radio, or a lot of mobile radios, do have an external jack in the back of them. So when you plug in an external speaker, it automatically disconnects this speaker. And that's because there's a little switch inside that jack. So if you do not have sound coming over your radio, when this, if your external speaker... Uh, it's not plugged in and you don't hear any sound then you could have a bad jack and that switch is not switching back and forth or if you have no sound maybe plug in an external speaker to see if you have sound maybe this speaker is blowing so that's kind of a nice thing about having a external speaker jack it will help you troubleshoot your radio so if I get a radio in and I don't have any sound and I can see on the display it's receiving it by the bars, then I either have a bad internal speaker, could be one way, um, or this jack ain't switching right is another thing, 
or I could have a bad capacitor or a bad audio chip. Now, getting back to my capacitor, it says here 330 microfarad, 25 volt. Well, you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute, did you just say there's a 35 volt in the circuit? Yes. But why does it say 25 volt on the schematic? Well, there could be a lot of a few reasons for that. I don't know when the schematic was drawn up. Was it the final schematic of the radio when it was all said and done, or is this a, a rough schematic that was drawn up? I'm not really sure. That's one reason. The other reason is you can always go higher with a capacitor value. You can put in. If it's calling for 25 volts, I can put in a 35 volt capacitor. That won't hurt nothing. You just can't go lower. So don't get a 330 microfarad 16 volt and put it in there. If that's too low, you can blow that capacitor. You can go higher, but you can't go lower. So maybe perhaps this schematic is not the final version of the schematic when the radio was done. Or maybe they got a good deal on 35 um, volt 330 microfarad capacitors, so they went and went with that, and they bought a whole bunch of those to build this radio. That's another possibility. So, but go by what's on the circuit board, uh, just to be on the safe side. So, even though it says 25 volt, you could probably get away with the 25 volt, but just in case, go what's on the circuit board uh, to be on the safe side. So now, how do I know? that this is um, this capacitor is part of it. Let's let's erase what we got here and let's go ahead and go back. Well, as I said earlier with the meter, I can test it with the meter on continuity, but I can also tell that if I trace this back and it goes to here and it goes down here and it goes to that built-in switch that's inside the jack and it's on when there's nothing hooked up, and if I go to here and I go over, it goes right to the negative side of that capacitor. Remember, I told you the capacitor is marked, which is negative. So if I take my meter and go to the negative side of that capacitor and I start touching the um, plug-in for that internal speaker, let's go ahead and go to that. So let's go ahead and clear this. And let's go ahead and go back to this. So if I take my meter, since that schematic said negative side, which is right, it's kind of hard to see, it's kind of an angle, it's right there, and I find it on the bottom side with pins negative, and I touch my meter, and I go to that jack bottom side, I can figure out with continuity or if there's a connection that that's the capacitor. But like I said, this capacitor is bald. So either way, it needs to be replaced. Now, you can apply this method to any electronics. It could be a TV set. It could be you can do a visual inspection to see if a capacitor is bulged on top. Now, you could have bad capacitors and not have a bulge. So don't be tricked by that, thinking, well, none of my capacitors have a bulge, so they must be okay. No, that's not really true. You should test them with an ESR meter if you want to be technical. But you can do a visual inspection without needing to do that. So I want to show you what a bulge capacitor looks like. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare under the microscope both of these capacitors. This one is good because there's no bulge. This one is bulge. Now I'm going to try to show you this. Um, so let's go ahead and go to the microscope. Bear with me here. We're going to see if I can do this. Oh, look at that. Dave's looking up. You can see that now. See that? Now, these ain't bulge really bad. I've seen ones that were a lot worse. But you can see the top of that capacitor is not flat like it should be on this one. See, it's bulged. Sometimes they get really bad and you can really tell. That one's bulged. That capacitor needs to be replaced. Now, whether or not that will fix my sound, I don't know until I replace it. Um, I may have to get a different speaker. But nevertheless, that's how you check for bad capacitors, how to do a visual check, is you look on the top side of them. And if they're bulged anyway, this one, you know, just a little bit. 
then it's probably um, going to be, you know, obviously it's bad and you, you should you should replace it uh, regardless, technically. Now, I'm going to uh, see what I have around here for parts to try to replace that. I don't really care if this radio has the perfect sound coming on the speaker because this radio... I don't use the audio circuit that's in the speaker. This radio is my repeater radio, and I don't need to use that because I have a DB9 at the end of it, and I get sound coming out of there just fine. So I don't really need to fix this technically. But I just want to show you what a bulge capacitor will start to look like, and they can get a lot worse, but that's how you check. So let's go ahead and go back to the other camera here. Okay, so that was this capacitor here I showed you under the microscope. Remember, it was side by side. That's what I was showing you. So that's how you can do a quick visual inspection of electrolytic capacitors. Now, there's capacitors that are out there that are not electrolytics, but electrolytic ones you can quickly tell by looking on the top of them and see if they're bulged. And if they are, then they're bad and you should replace them. And that may fix your problem. A lot of times they use these in power supplies too. Matter of fact, the one next to it is the power supply one. So if you got a TV that doesn't turn on, you got a, a radio that doesn't turn on, pull the cover off. You might see some bald, bulging capacitors that may... Uh, need to replace what happens is when they start to do that they could make the power if this if this was a, a capacitor in the power supply it could make the power be too low so for an example if I have a TV set it doesn't turn on maybe my five volts uh, line um, is low because of a bad bulging capacitor maybe it's only three volts when it should be five volt so that's what I mean you can kind of do a quick visual inspection to kind of see. Now, of course, like I said before, capacitors can go bad in other ways. Not always a visual way, but you get the idea. So that's how you can quickly check yourself without any fancy equipment. Do I have a bulge capacitor or not? And if not, do I need to test it even even more? Well, so at any rate, hope, I hope this video was helpful. Um, if you want, you know, if enough people out there... That my notes, maybe some basic electronics. Maybe I'll start doing some of those videos. I do not know. But at any rate, uh, any comments or questions, put them down below. Please subscribe. Thank you and have a good day.